Hello, everybody. Welcome to another Wednesday webinar with myself, your host, Glenn. I am part of our resolution tier two and onboarding team. And coming from her brand new office in her brand new apartment, we have the unbeatable and incomparable Heather. Take it away. Oh my goodness. Hi. Thank you. Thanks, Glenn. <laughs> Thanks for joining us today. Um, we're going to cover a lot of information on the CRM and we do one of the things that we love the most is when you ask questions because this is all about you um, and making sure that you're getting the right information um, and making sure you're getting the best out of your CRM as well. Um, another thing that we don't really have on uh, these charts here, but I always like to mention is that don't try to come into the CRM learning everything all at once. It just becomes overwhelming. Focus on what works best for you and then become a pro at using those couple features. And then once you get past that, then you can learn more. Um, but there is a lot of different features to offer. So let's dive in because uh, it's a lot of information to cover. Again, don't get overwhelmed. And if we go too fast, ask us to slow down, please. Yes, Heather and I are both to the point that we know this stuff so well that we sometimes just do it naturally. So definitely tell us to slow down. Uh, one of the things we do want to let you know is we're always here to help you. If you do need support, you can just go to the bottom right of your top producer CRM. You will then see a chat icon, which will allow you to connect to our chat team. As I'm very fond of saying, they are 100% homegrown humans. We do not have robots in human suits yet. Homegrown humans. <laughs> I knew you'd love that one, Heather. Yes. Uh, so it is a human on the other side, so they will do their best to help you out. If for some reason the main chat team can't assist you, our senior team will give you a buzz. You can That's go there. Here. Oh, sorry. Oh, so I was just going to add to that. Absolutely. So if you're in the chat and you're not getting your answers um, met and you need more assistance, please, again, let us know in the chat to say, you know, I'd really need someone to call me or I'm just not understanding this, but please let us know and don't go away frustrated. Yeah. So that is available Monday to Friday, 7.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Pacific Standard Time. Or for my co host who's on the east coast that would be 10 30 a.m to 7 p.m eastern standard time now if you do have a question that is not time specific feel free to send us an email at support at topproducer.com you can also go to support.topproducer.com and get a lot of easily answered questions taken care of there through our faq and as always if you're looking for a good training session heather and i are part of the onboarding team we do offer onboard or let me try that again. We do offer paid Zoom meetings where you get three meetings with us, one of the two of us or one of the other two members of our amazing team. And we'll do our best to make sure you're looked after. Our goal is to make sure that you have complete success with the software. Absolutely. And if you guys want to start the chat and even just let us know where you're from, I'm in Ontario, Canada. I don't know if you guys have been here. But we are experiencing the strangest weather right now. It's 13 degrees Celsius, which is like 55 degrees Fahrenheit. And it's February in Canada in the wintertime. We should be in the minuses. We should have a load of snow. But we are calling for thunder and thunder showers today. So I'm just really confused. So I hope everyone else's weather is a little bit more on the normal side. But ours is really wacky this winter. You want confusion, Heather. Before I went to bed last night, we had snow out here on the West Coast. Yeah, that's weird. So, so yes, welcome to the new world where Mother Nature is confused. So hopefully you're all warm in your homes and, uh, and getting this training. So, okay, let's jump in. So we're going to start with the CRM. Now, if hopefully by now you've already got your username, password, you've met with your sales rep, you've already signed into your top producer. If you haven't, when you do sign in for the first time, you, you should receive an email with a username and password. You're going to sign in for the first time. And we encourage you to go to your settings first to make sure that you get everything set up so you can really, um, you know, get the best use of your CRM, make sure that you have all that information in there to, to use it. Um, it's pretty straightforward. You go to your settings and you're just going to go through it. You'll see the photo here. It shows you your settings. And right at the top, it says my information. And you're just going to kind of go down through each tab. 
We don't really go over this too much because we're hoping by now you've already filled out this information. If you're stuck on any of this, that it, you know, it hasn't worked out for you, please let us know in the chat or please um, let us know here and we can go back and show you some more. I do suggest though, in my information, make sure a couple of things that your time zone is correct because it will go based on any appointments that you put on your calendar and such. Also for your address that you put into my information, I highly suggest you put in your office address. If you don't work from, uh, you don't have an office and you work from home, just leave your street address out of it. Totally up to you, but this will go out to your marketing and uh, the general public will have access to that. So um, if you wanna be a little bit more private about that, then uh, just put in your office address, please. Yeah, so very quickly gonna go over to top producer. Let me get the right buttons. We're going to go like this. So again, all your settings. My info, again, highly recommend. Don't put your personal address in here. Uh, we lost our last name on here, Heather. We're just Heather and Glenn. It works. Wow. Phone number, again, home number is not one you really want to put in there. Uh, email is the one that you would use for the main account, and it's the one that you signed up with. And then just fill this info in. Any of the other items that you have down the row here, let's say you need to know about information on your email integration, you can just click here. All this is is filling in your email, authorizing it, and you are in good shape. So let's see here. Did you get, um, I hope I'm pronouncing this right, Azim? Did you get that information there? Um... We can check into it, and if, if need be, we can have your login information resent to you. Absolutely. Yeah. Perfect. Yep. Yeah. So that's all your settings. Any questions on any of the settings at this time? If not, I will let Heather go to the next screen because I know everyone prefers when Heather's on screen than me because <laughs> I don't blame you. <laughs> all right. So let's dive in. Um, and again, during this, please ask us any questions that we can help make sure you get the best of your CRM. Um, so a couple of things and reasons that people want to use a CRM is to follow up with your contacts, stay in touch with them, and it's just a great place to manage everything in, in one spot. So there's a couple different ways that we suggest following up with your contacts, and uh, we're going to kind of go over these together. So one of them being the follow-up coach. Now, if you've just signed in for the first time and you haven't added all your contacts, you're not going to see anyone in here yet. So don't worry, it will eventually show up. Um, I do believe you have to have like a minimum of 25 contacts in here for I think up to 24 hours before you're gonna start seeing um, anyone in your follow-up coach. But this is just kind of a reminder. So if you're not using a drip campaign or you don't have any other, other ways that you're using to follow up with your contacts, this is just a great way to, as Glenn would say, not let anyone slip through the cracks. Um, so this is... Uh, pretty neat that it's always here in your face. As soon as you sign in, you're going to see this follow up. And it's as easy as just clicking. Now, we do also recommend don't hit the skip because you're just putting that person at the back of the line. And if they're really not that important, then they probably shouldn't be in your CRM. So we want to make sure that we're following up with everyone. And whether it's a quick text, a quick email, uh, maybe you followed up because you called them or you did, um, I don't know, do you still go door to door? That might be another way that you followed up. But when you go to follow up, all you're going to do is make your notes as what you did as a follow up. Maybe they said, hey, like I'm I'm interested in maybe selling my house come the spring. So you want to make that follow up that you're going to reach back out to them so you can get ready to work with this customer. Yeah, exactly. Just what Glenn is showing you here. So you click on the wrap up. Wrap up, I think, is probably one of my best ways to make notes just because it gives you that option to add that follow-up and you can see how it's completed. <laughs> I like Glenn circling. <laughs> yeah, it's really easy. Um, when you come in here, especially in your dashboard, it's gonna show you three customers that you can easily follow up with right away. And then you can refresh it and give you a, yourself another three. So if you're not using a drip campaign, this is definitely one suggestion on following up with your customers. Simple as that. Just while Heather was uh, explaining everything, I was able to do two of the clients. And see, it's that simple that I could then go back and refresh the list. 
And I have three more. Now, I did do one of them. I hit skip. As Heather said, that'll put them at the back of the line. So you may not see any type of follow-up pop-up here for at least 180 days. So if you're going to hit skip, be 100% sure you want to skip them. Absolutely. Uh, so Zim has a question. Can we insert video? If you mean into an email, it's not designed to insert a video into an email. The reason behind that, from a technical standpoint, and this is where I put on my tier two hat for a second, video is one of the, if not the most easy way to send malicious software across the internet. It's best to put a link that will go to a approved site, such as a YouTube or your own website. And that way the customer is more likely gonna see it because a lot of email providers will actually block any video attached for the fact that it could, as soon as it starts streaming, infect a person with some malicious software. We know you realtors aren't going to do that, but email clients and providers seem to think, uh, yeah, they don't, they don't like it. Exactly. I like what Glenn said there about attaching a link. And another great thing about that too, is that if you do have like a YouTube channel that you do your own videos and you have that link there, then it not only do they see that one video, it takes them to your YouTube channel for them to see other videos as well. So that's one suggestion. I have had uh, agents also working with, um, I want to say it's called Boomtown, where they've created their short little clip videos, and we can add those to the emails, and that works just, and you can kind of see the little clip as it plays. So that is, um, you just can't create videos within Top Producer and add it that way. Um. New date for follow-up. So if you were to hit skip, it does put it to the back of the line. If you look at it and say, oh, I just talked to this person yesterday, you could go to call follow-up, click on Mark Done, and just say, talk to them yesterday, call next Friday. And then you can set up the phone call and pick the date. So next Friday would be the 8th. And then this will actually create a task for you, which if I click on tasks over here, I'm gonna go out right here. I've created this follow-up phone call for a week out. It won't automatically put them back into the follow-up coach, but it will put there a task for you to take care of that. I hope that helps. Definitely uh, take advantage of that task tab on the left-hand side because any follow-ups you do, any rem um, notes, reminders, or anything like that that you have created for yourself, you can see this under tasks for all your contacts. You don't have time to go back in and out of every contact, so this is just going to show you all of them and what needs to be done for the day. And you can see your overdue. Just make sure when you go into the tasks... Pay attention to those bars up at the top that you have today, tomorrow, the next seven days. You can customize to see what is due. I'm just playing around to see how badly out of date I am on our. <laughs> these are all fake contacts. We put in put them in just so that nobody knows or everybody knows. These are not associated with real people. So Heather and I do a lot of these webinars and we do the tests and we do like we just did. And apparently I never went in and looked at this and thought, you know what? We should not have anybody overdue. Like, except for Heather C, that's me. <laughs> well, <probably. laughs> yeah, I, I, I talk. I to have allowed that. <laughs> yeah, I, I talk to her every day, anyway. So you know, but you definitely don't want to have overdue here because, again, that is a opportunity that might have gone through the cracks. Absolutely. So keep an eye on it. If you ever see something overdue, that's when you want to definitely make a chance to fix that. So going along with these tasks as well, and another way to follow up is creating plans. Um, so I would suggest going into your marketing, and now plans can be whatever you want them to be. They can be a to-do list for yourself, maybe something that you need to have ready to do for a transaction. So it's not so much in the follow-up, but it is within the plans. Um, it could be, uh, you could have drip campaigns where maybe you have automated emails that are being sent out and in between those emails, maybe you have a reminder to call the customer as well. So you really get to decide how you want to have these plans set up. We do have some plans 
available for you to browse and add to your plans manager and customize. I always suggest customizing them because they're very generic and so they're not set up for you and your business. Um, you also have the option to add your own plan, create your own plan from scratch. So before starting with the plan, um, I would say go into your, e your template library, which is also in marketing. On the left-hand side, you're going to click marketing. You're going to see if you're all signed in. You're going to click template library at the very top of your bar. Now in here, there are a ton of emails. I'm just going to say a ton. I don't even know how many is in here, really. A hundred maybe, give or take. Um, give or take, yeah. <laughs> so you can go in here, click on any of these emails and customize them. Um, again, they are great content, but I always suggest customizing it because it's just very generic um, to real estate and or to the market. Um, you want to put your own name into it, put your brand into it, put your, your area, make it sound like it's coming from you. Um, so it's very easy to customize. Once you hit customize template, you can make any changes you want and you save that. And it will always be saved in your template library. Um, also, if you're going to customize, just remember every time you hit customize, it will duplicate the email. So just make sure that after you've made your changes, anytime going forward, if you want to make new changes, make sure you just hit the little edit on the, uh, the right hand side, you'll see a pencil um, icon, you just edit the email going forward. So once you're happy with all your templates, you got uh, all your emails ready to go and you want to start creating those drip campaigns. We're going to close out here. We're going to go up to task plan manager. So in yours, you might not see any plans. Yours might be empty right here. Again, this is just like a test demo. So we've created, I don't know how many plans just to get started. Um, so you have a couple options. When you go up to task plan manager, you have the browse templates on the right hand top, the top right hand side. If you click on the browse templates. Sorry, Heather, I was trying to add. Yes, I know your Muppet was paying attention to another screen. No, no, no. I'm wondering Sorry. if I'm going too fast. <laughs> no, no, no. I was typing something. My apologies. So you're going to hit on the um, the browse templates and you're going to click in this box. Now, these are templates that are already available for you. Again, they can be customized. Um, so it kind of gets you started if you're just like unsure what you need to have as a plan or what you kind of want to have. This is a great place to kind of start. So I think that's, you know, the reason for having these templates is just kind of gives you a little, little bit of a head start. Okay, I'm going to answer a question we have in the chat right now, Heather, because Absolutely. it is relating to this. It's from Candace White. Mm -hmm. She says, hey, guys, I'm back. Welcome back. Uh, <laughs> in our templates, activities, plans, transfer from top producer ADI to TPX. I wasn't able to find them at all. Okay, again, this is where the technical exp explanation has to come in. Top producer ADI is our old workhorse that has been plowing the fields for the last 20 years. Unfortunately, technology has gone from stone age to information age in 20 years. That's how quickly things have changed. I mean, you guys are all hearing about AI and how that's changing the landscape. 20 years ago, that was science fiction. What that also means is the code between 8i and X is so drastically different that unfortunately, and please don't kill the messenger on this one, Unfortunately, because of those changes, we can't just pull them directly over. So you I guess it's have to, okay? <laughs> so they, and the short answer is no, you can't transfer them over. But there are some kind of workarounds as well. Tell Guru. <laughs> 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 so that you can't transfer them over from 8i. However, um, a few suggestions. Um, if you if you sign up for the concierge, um, as one of the perks, we do help transfer over some of those plans for you. Um, so we kind of have to do it one by one, which is fine. And that's a part of uh, the concierge package if that's something you want to do. If you want to do it yourself, um, it's really easy just to kind of do a side by side if you're familiar with that. And it's a copy and paste and bring them over. However, um, depending on how old the plans are, another suggestion is just fresh, just start fresh. Um, the reason for this is because a lot of the content becomes outdated and depending on the wording you're using, who you're targeting and you, you want a clean start, you don't want to be sending out old information. So that is another reason why maybe starting with new plans is, is not always a bad thing to do as well. 
I, I, I remember Candace was there for us the one time. So here, here's my Grogu. He's behind here. Uh, yeah, Heather's completely right. It is better. Honestly, all the plans that we had in 8i have been updated. So it's a good idea to do an update. And besides, every the things you did back in 8i days, you've probably changed it in the TPX days now. So great time. It Yes, it's a pain, but it's a great time to update and make your things a lot more you. You've changed in the time as well, right? Absolutely. So this isn't a... Um... I, I just kind of want to bring up something that will also help with plans. Um, if you haven't already heard of ChatGPT, it is a nice, useful tool. Think of it as a tool that can help you and, you know, and ask it, how can I create a plan for and give me some ideas and anything like that. Um, we do have some video clips that I'm sure Glenn can maybe um, help find those links and can post them that will give you more information on chat GPT and how to use that as a tool that will also just help you create fun plans that works for you and your business. Now you just caught me off guard. I got to try to figure out where that was. I think, <laughs> I think it's it was on our blog. blogs. Yeah. <laughs> Which we'll, we'll mention later that we do have blogs. Uh, we have different, um, different avenues with resources available for you. Um, that was mean putting me on the spot like that, Heather. <laughs> that was mean. Okay. Well, um, that being said, I'll be right back. Okay. I think she's probably getting an Amazon delivery or something. So while she jumps away for a second, I'm going to go back over here. So we do have those task plans that you can create and edit as needed. We also have another one because a lot of you will be buying leads from outside places such as a realtor.com or Zillow or something like that. We have something known as auto respond plans. So what that is, I'm going to grab this here. We have a lead response plan. Now I'm actually going to grab the Canadian version because I'm Canadian. We take it from our social connect as well. It gives a initial email to a new lead and sends a market snapshot report and then suggests a phone call. And then it will over 84 days just go about out and send emails and suggest phone calls to them. So these are four brand new leads that you're getting. So with that, you would have this plan and I'm pretty sure I have one or 13 lead responses in place here. Yeah, I got one right here. You would then go over to the lead response rules right here. Click on that. And you'll see I have one in here. So I've got new realtor.com leads. But let me show you how I actually do that. So we add lead response rule up here in the top right. I'm going to name this one Zillow. So the source, you'll notice we have a bunch of them already here. So I can choose Zillow. And then I will have this lead response plan go on. So now, anytime I get a lead that's source is Zillow, it will automatically get this plan attached and we'll be able to send information out to that lead right away to get them taken care of. That way, let's say you're in the middle of a showing or helping somebody finalize their signing of their, the purchase or the sale. You can have this going out so you don't have to worry about missing that lead because we all know that people in, who are trying to buy and sell in real estate now are the least patient customers you will ever find. And so if you don't have a response to them within a couple of minutes, you end up missing out on them. And now I'm going to see if Heather is able to breathe because it looks like she had to run to the um, run downstairs and then run back. And <laughs> see the advantage of we do work uh, on different sides of the country, but we have a chat program that we communicate and she's like, Give me a second. I need to catch my breath. <laughs> so, so good. But yeah, the lead response plan, that's another way to make sure that you're communicating with people. Because just because somebody sends in a request now, it doesn't mean they're going to be a lead today, but they still might be a lead in the future. So take that inquiry, keep, com keep communicating with them, and you might turn them from an inquiry to a lead and then to a client. And that is the end goal for everybody, I do believe. So let's see what's next. I'm back. <laughs> wow. Well, that's okay, good. That was, 
That was a Costco and a Amazon delivery all at the same time, but I have lots of stares and my dog was barking. So it was just like, sorry, a very quick interruption. Thank goodness there's two of us here. Yes. So let's see. <laughs> Well, and hey, it worked out perfectly. I got to go through the not so fun things. And I know you are a fan of this part of the software. This is my, one of my favorite parts is this the types we're going to go over, right? Yeah. So every time I'm talking to someone, I stress using your types. And the reason why is because I know some of you have hundreds, have even thousands of contacts in there. And that must be totally overwhelming you need to have find a way that's going to you get to group your contacts there's no way you're going to remember everyone's names so and this is for good reason too like you this gives you ways to reach out to your customers differently versus just send them all the same generic information if you're using your types you're reaching out to them the way you need to be reaching out to them so um, what are, what are you sharing? Oh, okay. You're sharing the little types ideas that I, that I posted here. And like, these are just, again, these are just samples. So we have types available that you can use. You might also know them as tagging or tags. Um, there's, so there are some available in the list that you can use. And if, um, Glenn can give us a little demonstration on how there's a couple ways on how you can add types to your customers. Um, but take advantage of the fact that you can create your own. So this is where you can really customize. So you have maybe open house, you have events that you go to that you meet people, you have your buyers and sellers, and that's normal. Um, some people work with commercial customers, some people work with retirees or military families. Um, maybe you want to mention if they are um, boat lovers or golf fans or um, sports fans, whatever it is, um, those little things will help you stay connected with your customers and sending them the right information. Not only that, you'd be like, oh, yeah, okay, I remember who this is. Because um, again, with hundreds of people, you're not going to remember everyone just by their names. So when you're adding a customer, it's really simple. This is what Glenn is showing you right now on how you can add. <laughs> what is this? Heather knows boats. <laughs> Does that say Heather knows boats? Yeah, because you just mentioned boat lovers. And that's the first time you've ever mentioned boats. And I'm like, this is a new side of Heather. <laughs> <laughs> I know very little about boats. I enjoy being on them sometimes. Uh, I know they <laughs> float. You know, like it. if you live near a lake or you live near the ocean or whatever the case may be, and you have a yacht club, maybe you have customers that are a part of that. It, it's just, again, use your types, make it so it fits you and your business. It fits your customers. It's easy to reach out to them. So for example, um, you know, if you have a dog lover as a type, and there is um, a new pet store that just opened up in town. Use that as a way to connect with your customer. Um, hey, just want to reach out, see how our things are going with your new home. Just want to let you know there's a new pet store in town for your um, little puppy, Gracie. Well, my puppy's Gracie, but <laughs> again, it's just you can use this and you can make your life so much easier. And this is and I just love it. I love customization because I feel like not one program works for every single person, but the fact that you can customize this to you and your brand and your business, you can make this work better for yourself. So this is one way to add your types as you're adding a customer individually. But another way to add types, which I also love because maybe you're looking at your page here under your future contacts and you're like, hey, I know these four individuals that I are five or however many I'm going to click on, and they're all dog lovers. So I'm just going to click them all and then click my little tag at the top and give them all the same type at the same time. Now, another reason why I love these tags so much, and I'm going to show you, or Glenn's going to show you, and I'm going to explain. Love it. <laughs> but so if you just go to where one of those ones that you just created that says dog lover, there you go, and put your mouse right over it. Just make, you want to make sure that your mouse is right over it. It's a little finicky. Yeah, and go ahead and click right on dog Lover, and now it's just going to group them all together. So now you can send all these five contacts the email about the new pet store uh, for all their furry little friends. Maybe not buyer taking a long time, but anyways, it's that easy. Group your customers together for whatever. It doesn't have to be dog lover. It can be whatever you want it to be that makes sense for you and your business. Um, so that's one way to use the types and to search by them. Another search we have is in the top right corner. We have an advanced search. 
You can also search by multiple types at the same time. Just as Glenn is showing you here. Awesome. Now he searched buyer and dog lovers, I believe it was, yeah. Dog uh, park. Actually, it does show you right up at the top right corner, 12 results for buyers and dog lovers. And so that's what he just searched and that's what he has on his page. Um, and now he wants to email all of them. You just highlight, yep, yeah, click that little box up in the top left corner. I like your little, <laughs> awesome. And choose what you want to do. Maybe And maybe you want to put them on a plan, on a drip campaign that you just created. You can do that as well, all at the same time. So Candace asked a question. Now, this is where it becomes a little bit finicky. So if we clear the search and I just want to search buyers, it will bring anybody who has the buyer tag. But you'll notice down here, one of these should have, at least I thought one of them had it. So maybe I didn't have any dog parents as buyers. So then you can just find the, the dog. Ugh. I'm going to try that again and speak without messing up my verbiage you can do a search for a specific contact type so this just gets us buyers now because of the fact that i had also added in the dog parent this one went from how many from eight up to the 12 by adding that in because it finds the other two people that have this so you've got this and the rest should be bringing more should have like five people Eight to twelve. You had, 12. you had twelve the first time. Yeah, I, I, my math is not my strong suit. I'm doing something wrong with my math. One of them has to have buyer and dog as well. But, but yes, if they have do. many, if they have quite a few, uh, yeah, I don't think it'll show all of them on there. No, it won't. And because of the fact that we do this Zoom uh, every second and fourth Wednesday of the month, plus we used to do it also last year. Some of these contacts in here probably have about 30 or 40 contact types associated with them. I really need to clean that up, don't I? This is a test account. <laughs> yes. Yes. Oh, yes. Please keep in mind that if you ever see something not work on here, please don't think that that's not working. We abuse this account. And that is an understatement. We try to break things before they break for you. So Heather and I both come up with an idea of, well, could this break it? And then we'll try it. So please forgive us if something goes a little bit wonky here. That's because we have beaten this one into submission. <laughs> um, and as we're going over types, let's add another way to customize. Again, this is one of my favorite parts. I just love customization. I think it's great because... Um, no one does things the same. So let's just say, you know, your dog parents, is that what you spelled? <laughs> parents. We're parents. <laughs> Love it. Okay. So let's just say those are your favorite go-to people, or maybe you want to call it your hot leads or your A-list or whatever, anything that you want to name it. Let's go create a tab at the top of your, and so this is going to kind of be like that search that's already done for you. That's always there when you sign in. So in the top right corner, you'll see where Glenn's circling. It's right beside add contact and you click on this. It looks like a little settings gear. You click here and you click on create tab. Now your tab label can be whatever you want to call it. Favorites, uh, my go-to people, my A-list, my hot leads, name it whatever you want. Heather's go-to people and dogs. <laughs> and now you can add multiple types to that tab that you just created, or you can just add one type or multiple, whichever works best for you. And so once you're happy with that, then you're just going to say create tab. Oh, one thing I can also just type in here and then it'll bring up everything that has. Exactly. Everything. Don't be scrolling the whole thing unless there's. Some... Yeah, yeah, absolutely. So create that tab. And now you have this tab all the time. So now going forward, anytime you give somebody one of those types, if you get a new lead and you give them that type, they're going to automatically go under this tab. So it, again, it's just a search already done for you. You're probably going to notice that when you sign in, um, every time you sign in and you go to your contacts, it automatically takes you to the new tab. So you might sign in and go, where's all my contacts? I know I've, <laughs> you and I've done that a few times and I'm like, oh yeah. <laughs> just kind of remind myself I'm in the new tab. So let's just kind of quickly go over these tabs, what they mean and what you can do with them. 
Um, so new engage feature active closed. Think of these as like your um oh my goodness, I'm I'm losing my words. Uh hey, yeah, welcome to my world. <laughs> yeah, they're your sales pipeline. It's a status of where your customers are at. So if you are getting those new leads coming in from um, Zillow or Social Connect or um, Realtor.com, wherever they're coming from, you're getting new leads that come in directly from online. They automatically go into the new. So technically your new should be empty um, and or maybe one or two people in here in your lead quiz. When you come in, you come in, in the new, you want to make sure there's no one in here and you want to call them right away. Um, engage is for customers that maybe you're in communication with right now, you're just not sure if they're a hot or a cold lead, like where they're actually sitting, uh, but you're you're communicating with them. Future will be where most of your contacts are sitting um, at one time. These are your customers that are not in the market to buy or sell right now, but they will be in the future, or at least we hope they will be. Uh, so you're probably doing a lot of marketing and sending a lot of people the drip campaigns from this tab. Active, these are for your customers you're currently working with. You're either showing them listings or helping get their place ready to list, but you're actively working with them. And then close is when your transaction closes. So it's pretty simple. Now, these words might not work well for you. And you might think, you know what, maybe I use escrow instead of active or, or engage or something. Like you want to create your own tab that works again for you and your business. It makes more sense. So again, right up beside the add contact in the top right, you go there to your create tab. And you can do this by status and create another tab. So let's call this escrow instead of, here we go. And then click on your active or engage, whichever, yep. And create tab. And there you go. You have your escrow. You can also, like what Glenn just did, click and drag them in any order you want. And for some of these tabs that, again, if they just don't work for you and suit you, you can delete them. So you can click on them, drag them up or down and delete them. Now, not every tab can be deleted, but a lot of them can be. So pretty much any of the um, the ones that we just went over, they can all be deleted. So you're like, you know what, I just, this isn't going to work for me. I'm not going to use it. You can delete those and then create your own tabs across the top that works better for you. And you'll notice that when I did create this one that was called escrow, when I clicked on it, it actually had both escrow and active highlighted to show that these people were in both of them. So because the fact that escrow is the term that I prefer instead of active, I just leave that there, grab the, the active one, drag it down or up until it goes pink, let go of my mouse, and then it'll ask me if it wants to delete. And as you can see here, the contacts are still here. I didn't delete any of them. So no. it's, oh, it's a great sorry. way to organize it. It's okay, Heather. It's, it's a great way to set this up to be more how you do things instead of how we do them. We wanted exactly. to give you that customization. Exactly. I love it. Um, one other thing I just wanted to mention here. I don't remember. I didn't mention this, and I don't know if you mentioned this in the couple minutes I had to leave the screen, but <laughs> another way to follow up and that you can see right here where it says overdue. You might have not noticed this. So you have that option between the follow-up coach and between um, creating your drip campaigns. But this is another thing on each of your tabs that you can create a reminder for you. Um, so escrow is usually people that you're kind of working with and you don't want to leave too long. So like, for example, Glenn has it set here to reach out to them every five days. Um, so that's a really neat tool, I, I think. So in that way, um, again, you can go to here and you can be like, oh, I need to reach out to this person. I'm overdue. Or if it's not overdue, it will even say follow up. And I think we saw some of those maybe under the future possibly no we did not so we just had overdue and ones that we actually did something with okay so yeah because so, i did something with these ones it's a t every 20 days so kind of got to wait a couple of weeks before but yeah. if i were to change this to every 10 days or so let me see we should be okay no. let's try every 15 days so i'm not overdue i want to see if we're close to there we there go there we go yeah, so now you're going to see the overdue as well as the follow up because you're getting close or it's time for you to follow up with them. Um, and then the ones that are just in white, it, you're not overdue and you've already followed up with them recently. So, again, that's just another uh, neat way to use your follow up. Yeah. So, again, as I'm fond of saying, this will definitely keep it so nobody ever falls through the cracks. Mm -hmm. Last thing you want to do is have a client that you've worked with a long time all of a sudden go to another agent because they forgot you. 
hopefully, because you guys are all such amazing realtors, nobody does forget you afterwards. But just in case, because, you know, I know I have a memory like a steel trap. What goes in never comes out. You want to have these backups just to protect you and make sure you get that future uh, future listing. Absolutely. So now that we've gone over the types, how to customize your uh, contact page and your templates and or your uh, tabs and such. Now let's go over uh, one of my favorite features. Um, this is Property Insights. Now this is a great way. It's actually another great way to stay organized. Um, it's going to be for you to stay organized and it also just works with your buyers. So if you're working with buyers, use your Property Insights. Um, I think it's a great tool. I've asked so many agents, usually before I show them this, I ask them, how do you keep track of the homes you showed your customer? <laughs> I've had some say, I don't keep track at all and it doesn't really matter to me. Um, <laughs> I've had some say, oh, that's a good question. Or I have papers stacked somewhere or it's in a file or wh whatever the case may be. So this is a really neat way to stay organized digitally. But another great thing, not just digitally, it's in one place. So the, the point about using your top producer is coming here, having your emails in one place, having your property insights in one place. You just you don't have you don't want to have to go everywhere to find the information you're looking for. So if you go into your contact, let's just say this fake contact that we're working with, um, let's just pretend we're working with them. They're a buyer and we've shown them, we showed them a property today. So you just click on property insights. You click on, did it say add property? Is that what it said? Or add insight? Uh, it says add insight. Add insight. So you could do this by MLS ID or by address. And you're just going to start typing the address in. Don't go really too fast because otherwise it won't come up. If it says nothing found, just go back because it has to be exact as what's pulling from the MLS. Um, so yeah, just start typing it in. You're going to see it populate. Make sure that you choose the one that populates and voila, just like this. Uh -huh. Easy peasy. There you go. So you have it here and then you click on interest. So you can say shown because maybe you just shown this property to your customer today and we're going to go save property insight. That easy. Now, again, now you have you have record of the property that you showed this customer. So we're just going to go and show add one more, if that's OK, just for example. Trying to get the info I need because I know where you want me to do. <laughs> we're going to. Yeah. So we're going to just show you again how to do this, because, um, I mean, if you're working with a buyer, the likelihood is that you've probably showed them five, ten properties. I don't know, I guess, depending on uh what the market's like because I know over COVID it was like they only looked at one or maybe they didn't even look at any and they put it in an offer without seeing the home first. Now people are um, a little bit more careful of their investments I'm finding it's back to okay let's look at a few before I make a decision. So you may have a few homes here. Um, so that MLS number didn't work. Are we? Yes gonna... I failed on that. I'm getting another one. <laughs> patience my dear Heather patience. We like to pick on each other all the time. It makes life interesting. Yes. Makes our day. Goodbye. <laughs> ah, there it is. That's the proper ID. Okay. Perfect. There. Oh, no, it's not. <laughs> some days you're the windshield. Some days you're the bug. <laughs> Let's try that. Awesome. Actually, I think that's I had an extra really space nice property. There. So yeah. let me know what Let's just pretend I'm the buyer and I just like this. So let, I mean, that's a big tree in the front yard, but I don't know. It looks kind of cool. So let's just go ahead and pretend that I liked this house and I made an offer. So we're going to go ahead, add this and made offer. And as soon as you save this, you're going to also see that now because I made the offer, I can go ahead and add my transaction right away, which is pretty cool. So again, it just kind of does those steps for you. Um, but another thing that I really love about this tool is that you're going to add notes because when you're with your buyers, they're telling you what they like and they don't like. And you want to try and get, you want to get these people to buy something. So you want to take these notes. Please don't act like you don't care. Please take the notes because you want to get a quick sale so you can make some money. So you're trying to figure out what this customer really likes and doesn't like. So as you're out with them and you've already got, which we're going to show you later, you've already got top producer on your phone. And you're making these notes, 
what the customer liked and didn't like about the property because your job now is to find them the best property that fits them with their likes and their dislikes. And that's why you take, you take these notes and then later on you're not going back and racking your brain like, what was it that they didn't like? What was it that they did like? You don't have to do that because you've already taken your notes and it's right here for you. All right. And then the notes will show up here. Yes. This is the part that I both Heather and I really like. Your notes are always in one place. You can click on notes. It'll bring up the notes related to the property insight or just regular notes. But you can see right here, it's related to that address. So it'll bring you to that. Here's the note. If I go to the dashboard, here's that note again, right here. Most recent thing. Love it. Again, we make sure you have all the information in the palm of your hand, which as Heather said, we're going to show you how to literally have it in the palm of your hand. Exactly. And it's just another way of staying organized. That's what your CRM should always be about, is staying organized, being on top of things, and saving you time in the long run as well. So let's, okay, now we've got the property insights. And to also go along with your buyer and or seller, you want to send them a market snapshot. Now, market snapshot is actually really cool for a couple things. So if you do have a customer or a contact that comes in automatically from online. Maybe they come from Zillow or they come from, well, Social Connect will get an automatic market snapshot. You can set it up so that your, your leads coming in are automatically getting a market snapshot. Um, they'll also only get the market snapshot if they come in with a zip code, an email address and their name, then they'll get that market snapshot sent to them automatically for that zip code. So a market snapshot can work um, both for buyers and sellers. Uh, my suggestion would be that if for a buyer, you're going to set them up again based on their credential. So a great thing about this is that you can see the activity. When you send it to your customer, you can see if they're opening the email, if they're clicking on the reports. So you can see their activity, like how much, you, and that kind of gives you an idea of their interest. You can have it sent um, bi-weekly or weekly, bi-weekly. I think it's four, six, eight weeks. Uh, yes, it is quarterly, every six months and yearly. So depending on how, you know, if it's a hot buyer or if it's somebody you just helped um, purchase a home and then you want to send it to them yearly so you can keep them on, kind of just keep with that follow up there. So it is a great tool. Also within that time, if you send it to me and I'm a new buyer and I'm getting it every two weeks and you sent me the form today and then two days later, a new listing comes out, I will get notified about that new listing. So you don't have to worry about that as well. So yeah. lots of great things with the market snapshot also shows you what the market looks like. It pulls everything from the MLS so that people can, these customers can see all the photos. If they like it, you're going to get notified that your customer liked this address. Um, so again, if you're using it, if you're using it right, it's a great tool. And we can show you a sample and you can view a sample by going down to your settings or do we want to create a market snapshot? Let's use the uh, sample. That one works. Let's use a sample. So we'll yeah. go to your settings. Here or, remember, yeah. sorry, Heather, just cutting you off there. You have two ways to get your settings. Sometimes this little button down here in the bottom left doesn't show up. So you can still go through the top right, click on this, and go to settings. Sorry, I didn't mean to step on your, no, uh, your feet there. No, no. I, I love that there's like a couple ways, more than one way to do something in the system. All right, so here, if and now also for market snapshot, you do have to have that added to your CRM. And uh, we also have to support your MLS board in order to purchase this. Um, so with that being said, yeah, you just scroll down, go to settings, go to market snapshot and click on view sample. It's just a sample. It's not gonna show you the, the, uh, the homes on this is not gonna show you homes in your area. It's a sample, so everyone sees the same one, but it gives you an idea of what the market snapshot looks like. So you'll see like your name in the top left corner uh, with your phone number. If you've added your photo and your logo to my information, it will pull onto here. Anything that you put onto my information under your settings will go onto your market snapshot report. So at the bottom of the page, you'll have your uh, you'll have links to your social media accounts, your website, and any of that information that you did add as well. On top of that, you can see the market um, the market report, like average asking, average sold and such. You can get more details on that. And then you can view all the homes that are available. And uh, again, toggle through the photos. So lots of great information it has here. And it looks, it's, it's nice. It's got a nice appeal that you can send to your customers. Yeah, and this information up here, the four boxes here, 
They're a 90 day trends pulled directly from your MLS. So you're gonna see real world data there. It also helps to show people why they're, the price they think their house is worth isn't really <laughs> gonna fly in their area because the average asking price may be 3% below average sold price. So if you're asking for a billion dollars, but your house is worth $900,000, you're basically gonna have this thing tell you it ain't worth a, a billion dollars. Mm -hmm. Now you'll see right here, we've got these three buttons to say new for sale, for sale and sold. We will maximum send 100 properties to your clients. We will not go over that because 100 is a lot already, but you could have two or 300 available in your MLS. But if they get the 100 and they only want to see the new for sale, just have them click on the colored boxes and have them go gray, and then they can just see what's new for sale. Exactly. Also suggest that if you do have the market snapshot, send set yourself up as a uh, fake customer in your account and send yourself a market snapshot report. So then that way you can see how it looks when a customer is receiving it and you can kind of play around with it, get familiar with it. So when you are sending market snapshots to your customers and they have questions for you, then you are already a pro at using this market snapshot and you can guide them on how to use this as well. Uh, I did see here, Roxana, um, she's asking about how to get to the market snapshot. So if you have market snapshot as a part of your CRM, uh, you will see that in, well, first you go to your settings. Uh, it will, let's make sure that you have it. So you're going to go to your settings and you're going to go to market snapshot. Now, if it looks like this, you're all good to go. You do have market snapshot. If it does say request a free demo, then you, if you want to contact us and we can help you get set up with that. Um, it is an extra fee if you're not paying for it. However, if you signed up with your CRM and market snapshot combined, um, then I think, can you, um, sorry, I'm losing my words, Glenn. <laughs> if What is it you're trying to figure out? You can sorry. get, hey. If you're like, so if you've been a customer for a long time, you may not have the market yeah. snapshot as a part of your CRM and you can sign up for that. Yeah, for the longest time, we did do them as separate packages. Now, because it, we call it our top producer pro bundle, because it does give you the professional edge on what your fellow realtors may be doing. So as long as your MLS is compatible, we can get you into the top producer pro, get to the market snapshot. So you can start sending what I like to call a mini CMA to your clients that you don't have to spend all the time looking for the comparables because our system does it for you. Absolutely. Yep. Yeah. So when you have it, you go through here, do all the settings. Again, Heather mentioned this, I will reiterate, make sure you turn the auto fulfillment on. Anytime you get a new lead, as long as it has a name, email address, and a zip code or property, we'll send a snapshot on your behalf. Again, you, already talking to the customer for you. You might not want it going out automatically. That's totally up to you. You can turn it off and you can send it manually to your customers. So yeah. if you are set up with Market Snapshot, there's a couple ways to send a Market Snapshot. It's very simple. You can go to your marketing on the left-hand side that Glenn is showing you. And then up at the top toolbar, you'll see Market Snapshot. So you'll click on here and then on the right, it says send snapshot. So from the marketing, you're going to select what customer you're sending it to. Now, just remember, you're not sending a bulk market snapshot or a group market snapshot. And the reason for this is because every buyer and seller are different. You are sending a market snapshot specifically for your customer that so a buyer some people might be looking for condos or townhouses some people might be looking for a ranch in the country or um maybe they want to live in the suburbs or wherever it is like this is again you need to set this up individually for your customers it makes it makes more sense that way um yeah so you put in your information here i always suggest previewing it at the bottom before sending it and also add yourself and send it to yourself as a test account. Yeah, and I always, same as Heather, I always recommend that you preview because right off the bat, by just putting in a zip code, I have 182 listings. So this is where you start off. You wanna do that first, just to make sure you're gonna have listings to send. If you put in the zip code and it comes up with just 10 listings, yeah, go ahead and send that. That gives an overview of what your MLS is doing. 
But because we have 182, now's the time where let's change it from two beds to three beds and three baths. And then try the preview and see what happens. And let me see how many this gives. See, it, yeah, it went down by 60. I had to do math. Math is hard. Uh, so it's now 122. So you can keep refining it more on your client's desires. And if I can just add here, because I do get asked this question often about, you know, if you're setting this up and sending it to a buyer, they're like, oh, well, I don't want to send them all the sold listings. You do want to send them all the sold listings. And the reason for this is because it shows you what the market looks like. So if we go back and view, or if we want to send this one and then view what the market snapshot looks like, for example, we're going to show you here. And the reason why you want to keep the solds on, let's go ahead and view one of these. Oh, it didn't find anybody. Okay, let me see. Oh. <laughs> here, I'm just going to grab the one I sent to you. You probably, oh, you oh, did. Oh, look at that. See, I've actually opened the email 13 times. Wow. You actually I know. Paid attention to one <laughs> I've of been doing it purposely things. just to get the number up. <laughs> you have actually paid attention to something I sent. I, I, I appreciate that, Heather. So one of the reasons here you want to keep the solds on there is because it says average sold price, 1%, average days on market. Now, if you didn't have your solds on here, it's going to say zero and 0%. Zero and you're going to send somebody this and they're going to look at the market and be like, well, that doesn't look like a very good place that I want to live in. Well, not a good market, right? So um, definitely keep the solds on there. But if you're sending it to a buyer, this is just like a little tad bit information. They don't want to scroll through the 15 solds on here or the eight pending. So you can just click them, click on them, and it will eliminate them from here. So then they're just going to scroll through the few that are for sale. Perfect. It looks like somebody's selling a single hole on a golf course. Oh, a single hole. Yeah, because, you know, there's the, the pin and the... I was a golfer years ago. <laughs> I'm guessing like a... that's the whole golf course, I hope, for 849000 and not. No, it's probably just a house that looks over. So here, if I click on the picture, <laughs> it's going to pull up the info directly from the MLS. Oh. And yes, this is they're trying to get a golfer because they've got the view there. So then you, just like on the MLS, you can get all the pictures. What a view. Beautiful view, but if you want some broken windows. Maybe not. <laughs> it's we not want to sit frequent. out on your deck during golf season. <laughs> Broken windows are not as frequent as you would think on a golf course. Oh, okay, yeah, you're not really ducking the ball. balls coming towards you. I mean, if I was golfing, that's what people would be doing. <laughs> no comment. But <laughs> I have a couple of things on here that are going to be really cool that you can show your clients. As Heather said, if she were to come onto this property and say, well, Okay, golf course, I'm going to be ducking, but I love the look of that kitchen absolutely has me in love, which I know my wife would be over head over heels. If you click on this, it's going to send, or if your customer clicks on that, it's going to send a message to you to say that they like this property. So you can reach out and say, hey, I saw you like this property. Would you like me to set up a uh, viewing? Now, one of the coolest things we have, and this is going to open up another page, is something called walk score. So in this day and age where owning a car is ridiculously expensive, this will tell you if your house that you're looking at is close to being car dependent or not. Now, looking at where this one is, it is in the middle of a sort of resort area just across the border from where I live. So... It is totally car dependent because you need 23 minutes to walk to the nearest convenience or a 35 minute bus or bike ride, 60 plus minutes to drive and no, no traffic or transit. That's crazy. 60 plus minutes to walk. So yeah, it's, it's pretty cool though that, you know, you can pretty much look at Google maps from here and see yeah. um, where you're located and, uh, and what you need to live in that area. But this is also take note of this, which we kind of went over um, emails, open email clicks and such. Now, this is if you are sending uh, your customer reports, you can see their activity. Yeah. So if they don't have any activity and you really want to get on this customer, call them like, mm -hmm. hey, just let you know, I sent you a market snapshot report. Have a look at it. Let me know what you think. Um, and then, you know, get them clicking because that's you want them to get interested in uh, either buying or selling.
Yep. Absolutely. Now, and if I could just add, the reason that you would send it to a seller is to, and actually, I think you might've covered this, Glenn, um, is to just show them what it would look like for them to sell their homes based mm -hmm. on homes similar to theirs in their area, what they're selling for. Yeah, because you guys always give a price or a price point to your clients. Some of them are probably going to be like, well, I disagree with that. But because of the fact you have this snapshot, they can see what everything in the area is going for. Exactly. So let's see All what right. else we have. Because So well, that's it for the snapshots. If you don't have market snapshot and you're interested in getting it, reach out to us and we will get you set up with that. Uh, right at this moment, we don't have any new features to showcase, but if you ever want to know, in the bottom left, there is a what's new button, which if you click on that, you can see the most recent information. Well, we do have our dashboard, which is still relatively new, oh, um, cool. within the last month, three weeks, give or take. So when you first sign in, it's now automatically going to take you to the home. It used to take you to the contacts page. Now it takes you to home, which is your dashboard. And this is kind of neat because you can see everything at a quick glimpse, like right mm -hmm. in front of you. So like what's more important? Another thing, again, with customization that I love the most, in the top right corner, you can say edit layout and you can choose where you want, you know, the most important thing for you to go. So maybe your tasks might be more up at the top. Exactly. <clears throat> Just like Glenn is showing you here. I messed that up pretty good, didn't I? <laughs> you can resize some of them, put them in any order, and then save your layout the way you want. So again, it's great for customization. You can reset it back to how it was. But this is just like a quick glimpse at everything. And you can click anywhere on here to take you to where you want to go. All right. Uh, so I think the next thing here is our social connect which you, um, if you haven't, you may or may not have Social Connect. I don't know if anyone in here has Social Connect. If they do, um, how is it working for you? Um, so with Social Connect, I'm just going to kind of explain uh, quickly how this works. Um, it is a lead program. Please take in mind, though, it is not guaranteed leads. So they're inquiring leads. They are inquiring on your ads that we've created for you based on your listings. So it could be your sold listings or your active listings. We build these ads. We pull it from MLS. So it's whatever listings you have on MLS that we create these ads with. So how it works is that it you get to pick up to five cities if you do have Social Connect you get to pick up to five cities that you want to target people that live in those cities. Now, it's also on an, by, based on an algorithm going to target people that are already looking at the market. Um, so if they're looking at, you know, um, they type in homes or rentals or um, houses for rent or they're looking at the MLS and they're in these five cities that you that you selected, then they're going to start seeing your ads. So it's pretty simple how they look at, how they see your ads. When they click on it, it doesn't take them to the listing. You got to think that these are just an ad. Um, that's all, that's the purpose of it. Um, so they see this ad, they click on learn more and their information will pop up on the screen on another little box. Their information pulls directly from social media. So it's either Facebook or Instagram and it pulls their name, phone number and email address. They do have the option to change that information. However, if they continue to go forward and they say next, then they will come into your, into your CRM as an inquiring lead. Um, so then we do also have it set up that they are going to get automatic emails, automatic market snapshots sent to them. Um, you don't have to worry about setting that up. It's all set up for you. And then all you have to do is reach out to them and call them whenever you get a chance and uh, see what they're interested in, what, what uh, drew them to your ad or what about it that the market that they're looking for, if they're looking to buy or sell? It usually is primarily buyers, but just take in mind if you are using Social Connect, it could be anyone. It could be uh, renters, it could be buyers, sellers, it could be looky loos. I'm kind of a looky loo, so um, I'm not a realtor's dream, but <laughs> anyways, this is what Social Connect is. So it's a pretty neat tool if you do have it. Uh, what if there is nothing active currently in MLS? So for yourself, if you don't have anything active, um, it will pull your solds. If you don't have anything, 
If you don't have any active or any solds, the only other suggestion is if we um, if we can pull from the office listings, we can we can't do that for every MLS. And if you don't have either, we can't pull office listings active, and you don't have any active or sold, then we wouldn't suggest this because that is the only way to create these ads is based on your listings. Yeah, this is you would be able to if you have solds on there. They will go out. You can have up to 20 solds going back up to two years, dependent upon your MLS and what they allow to see. Mm -hmm. Your actives, you can have up to 20 of them at a time. <laughs> but again, I'm going to parrot what Heather said. If right now you don't have any actives and you really don't have any solds going back for a while, because you know the market was cool and you were working in a different capacity. Right now, it's not going to be really beneficial. Mm -hmm. And I think we just proved right there, you and I are not salespeople for top producer because <laughs> we didn't just try to say, hey, it doesn't matter. Just buy it. No, we're, we want to make sure, like if you're buying product, we want to make sure it's benefiting you. Um, but I, I always do suggest to that or, or suggest, but let you know, it's not a guaranteed lead. But it does bring in a lot of people into your database and build your database. And not only that, just because they come in with this program, now they're always going to be in your database that you can reach out to whenever. They will, with this plan, they will have automatic emails and market snapshots going out for up to 84 days. Um, hopefully within that time, though, you've already reached out to them and now you're working with them. So it is a really cool way to build your database if you do have any active listings. So that question, Candace, how would I find out if they could pull from the office? You would have to, basically, we have to review our agreement with your MLS, also what they can do. There might be some paperwork that has to be signed. There are some MLSs that do allow it. There are some that don't. It's MLS dependent. So yeah. that would be something that if you talk to your sales rep, they'd be able to look at that and find out for you. Absolutely. And there's a couple different packages available as well. Yeah. So um, there's, a, I think the lowest one starts at 250 and it would be, um, correct me if I'm wrong, but I believe it's up to 25 leads a month for the 250. And then it goes up, uh, I believe 500, 700 and a, or 500, 7, 750 and a thousand, somewhere around there. Um, again, the best people to give you those numbers though would be our sales reps. Yeah. And Keep in mind, it is an average of, say, on the Social Connect 250, it is an average of 25 leads or inquiries. I don't like the word leads. I don't, I try not to use it anymore, but it's uh, an average of 25 over the six month commitment. It, so if you have a slow month where you only get 18, we'll try to make sure that before the end of the six months are up, you have got the 150 that you would have got for that. Absolutely. And just like you said there, Candice, it is actually a great way to build your database. So for new agents that are coming on, it's a little bit harder to get out there, right? So like to get those people automatically coming into your CRM and you can use to kind of keep um, following up with then. And one of those would eventually become an active lead that you're working with. That would be a great way for uh, for new agents to get some more leads or more contacts. Yeah. Um, so yeah, it, this is how it works. Again, if you do, if this is something you're interested in, then um, we can have a sales rep reach out to you or, yeah. Yep. So this is basically what it does. Anybody who's scrolling socially will see them. We do an expertly crafted ad. We get all that information out there. You don't have to worry about the ads. The film is auto filled. There is a chance to update. An immediate follow-up um, gets the emails and the market snapshot going out. And then hopefully the person is engaged. So you can turn them from an inquiry into a lead and then a contact. Absolutely. Yeah. And um, also with all of that being done, now you can also add top producer right onto your phone. So it's not an app. Don't go to your app store. Um, this is even better. It is mobile friendly. Uh, the reason for that is that you don't have to worry about like the app crashing or anything like that. It is just pulling the website directly up. So any changes you make, you're going to immediately see also um, when you sign in on your computer. Um, so really, you can sign in on your tablet, your computer, um, wherever. Uh, so if you are signing in, I will let you know the Android way because I use an Android phone. So if you go to one of your web browsers, could be 
Edge Chrome or um, Firefox, whatever you like to use as your browser, click on there. You're going to type in crm.topproducer.com. Once you bring that up, you're going to see and you click on it, you're going to see your login information. Here you can save this part or you can sign in and then save it. But you're going to th see the three little dots in the top right corner here. And uh, once you click on that, you're going to get a drop down and it's going to ask you to add to home screen. It's that easy. Um, and then you'll see the little TP symbol. It looks like an app. You click on it. And again, this is where you can use that property insights while you're out at the property with your customers and you can be adding those notes while you're on the go and not have to wait until you get back to the office. And if you're on an iPhone, you do have to do it through Safari because I uh, iPhone has that closed environment. Once again, you open up Safari, go to crm.topproducer.com. Unlike on the Android, you would go down to the bottom and you're gonna see three or five buttons along the bottom. The center one is gonna have a box with an arrow pointing up. If you click on that, it will have an option to add to home screen. And usually the very first time you go to Top Producer on your phone, it will come up and say, would you like to make a button on your home screen? If you just say yes, it'll do all that for you. All righty, so we've gone a little bit over time. Surprise, surprise, Heather and I never get this under an hour, but we try. But we do appreciate you sticking around. We do have a lot of resources, like we said. If you do need some frequently asked questions, hop over to support.topproducer.com. While there, you'll see along the top, we do have our schedule for our recordings and our webinar. So I'm just going to jump back here support site, you have the webinar schedule up here. Again, everything we have for Top Producer, we'll always have this little button down in the bottom right-hand corner so you can chat with our team at any time you want. That's the wrong button. I wanted this one. There we go. Uh, we also have a quick library of videos there. You're laughing at me, Heather. I can see that out of the corner of my eye. No, I'm <laughs> Sure. Yes, yeah, so we again we have all kinds of resources available for you. Facebook, YouTube, blog. We have our chat. Did we show them the live chat? Yes, we did. And when I say live chats, because we're real people in the chat, not AI yet, which is great. Um, again, if you are stuck with anything, let us know in the chat. Just you know, we're we're pretty friendly, so um, we like to make sure you're getting the help that you need. And myself and Glenn are here a couple times a month. For you as well. And we do also, as we've mentioned, we have our concierge onboarding team. That is myself, Heather, and two other amazing people by the name of Evan and Jordan. We would do everything to make sure that you are feeling like you're ready for success with the software. We're you a pretty always... cool team. <laughs> we are. Yeah. We are not, to, not to pat ourselves on the back, but we are pretty cool. We're fun people. Yeah. So yeah, so that... Oh, sorry. I was just going to add that is $2.99 if you are interested in the one-on-one -on -one onboarding for concierge. And we meet with you a few times directly over Zoom. Uh, you get to share your screen. We help you set things up. We can help with those plans to move over. Um, anything that you need help with to really get you uh, get you started. Yep. So I see we've gone down from eight attendees to three. So people are probably needing to get back to their real life instead of the enjoyable hangout with us. So I think this is where we should say, uh, I'm going to move over so my little buddy is on the screen. Uh, we do appreciate you coming out to our webinars. We do these for you. We're glad to get all the questions we got. Hopefully, if you have any other questions, you can reach out to our team and we're more than happy to help you. And we really appreciate your time. Thanks for letting Heather and I babble on like we always do on a Wednesday webinar. Uh, thank you so much. And we'll see you again. Have a great day. You bet. Take care, everyone. Have a super day. And we'll see you in two weeks. Bye-bye.